Hey everyone, welcome to our exploration assignment. My name is Gerline. And my name is Manpreet. So even though aracoid mycorrhizas were briefly introduced in lecture, we didn't have the opportunity to explore this interaction in depth until now. This presentation is designed to help future biology 453 students in deepening their understanding of an underappreciated topic. We hope you enjoy. So what are mycorrhizal associations? A mycorrhizal association is a partnership between a fungus and a plant root typically occurring in higher plants. At most times, both organisms involved in this association can benefit from the interaction with at least one or more species benefiting at a certain time. The association that we'll be discussing today is mutually beneficial between the fungal species and plant species involved. Before we dive into some of the interesting details, let's go over some important facts that we should be aware about mycorrhizal associations. Firstly, this association can be divided into two groups based on the location of the nutrient exchange mechanism. Ectomycorrhizal fungi form the nutrient exchange mechanism outside of the plant root cells, and endomycorrhizal fungi form these exchange mechanisms inside the root cell by penetrating the plant cell wall. These mycorrhizal fungi can have distinctive structures at which they can exchange key nutrients, water, chemical signals, and sugars. We'll be focusing on aeropoid mycorrhizae, which are known to produce a hyphal coil structure inside the plant cell. Furthermore, looking at a broader scale, a mycorrhizal association can have two distinctive effects on nutrient availability for a plant. Firstly, this association can have quantitative effects, which can increase the ability of the plant to extract more nutrients from the soil solution, making it more accessible for the plant. Soil solution can be defined as the liquid phase of soil, which contains key dissolved nutrients and gases. On the other hand, certain associations can bring forth qualitative effects which can increase nutrient availability by accessing certain nutrient pools that are not directly accessible for plants. All right, so now that you've gotten an overview of mycorrhizal associations, let's talk about aracoid mycorrhizae specifically. So aracoid mycorrhizae are characterized by fungal coils that form in epidermal cells of fine hair roots um, of ericaceous plant species. So aracoid mycorrhizal fungi establish loose hyphal networks around the outside of root hairs. So from the outside of the roots, these fungi penetrate cell walls and ultimately form intracellular coils that can densely pack individual plant cells. However, the fungi do not penetrate the plasma membrane of plant cells. Evidence suggests that coils only function for a period of a few weeks before the plant cell and the fungal hyphae begin to degrade and new associations are formed in the meantime. Furthermore, scientists actually have robust evidence to support that this symbiotic relationship has evolved independently several times from ancestral saprotrophs, which are fungi and bacteria that are involved in, de in degrading organic matter in the soil. So as mentioned, aracoid mycorrhiza involves a specific relationship that is symbiotic between a fungus and a plant. The first paper by Proto and colleagues suggests that aracoid mycorrhiza involves an interaction between ascomycetes and some basidiomycetes fungi and plant species in the Ericaceae family. The second paper by Brazon and colleagues provided a real life example of this interaction, which is between Rhizophis ericae, so aracoid mycorrhizal fungal species, and Gotheria cespitosa and Gotheria pumila. So which are plant species from the Ericaceae family. So why should we care about this interaction? Well, it is estimated that Ericaceae plants hold 20% of Earth's terrestrial carbon stock. So keep in mind from unit one that storing carbon is an important part of mitigating the effects of climate change. Thus, this interaction is not negligible and certainly worthy of further investigation. So the environmental conditions at which this association occurs are in infertile and acidic soils with low nutrient concentrations within the soil solution. These areas are predominantly polluted with heavy metals mixed in with soil, which can have toxic effects on many plant growth processes. Additionally, these environments are typically nitrogen limiting due to the slow decomposition of organic matter, which is a key source of nitrogen for the plants. Slow rates of decomposition limits the amount of inorganic nitrogen available within the soil solution for many plant species. Furthermore, this interaction has been associated with high altitude, boreal, subarctic, and arctic regions, particularly regions that are also associated with alpine conditions as well. For example, typical areas where this association occurs are in heathland sites located around the world, which are composed of a shrubland habitat. 
These sites are typically characterized by the environmental conditions associated with Iroquois mycorrhiza, as I've previously mentioned. So what are some important features of the Iroquois mycorrhizal interaction? So as we mentioned, this relationship is characteristic in environments with high external stress for plants such as acidity and heavy metal toxicity. After the plant is exposed to these external stresses, it forms a symbiotic relationship with the fungus. In order to facilitate nutrient transfer, a hypocoil forms inside the plant cell wall. Now remember, the coil penetrates through the plant cell wall, but not the plasma membrane. The coils only last a specific time, about five to six weeks, and then are degraded. But in the meantime, new coils are formed in other root cells as the roots develop and extend. And so the overall Iroquois mycorrhizal association continues to survive, but the individual cells that are interacting undergo rapid turnover. Therefore, a plant that forms Iroquois mycorrhiza remains to be mycorrhizal its whole life. Now, you may be wondering, how specifically is the fungus helping the plant survive in heavy metal soils? Scientific evidence suggests that this fungus has unique adaptations to survive in heavy metal environments beyond just the internal nutrient exchange that occurs in the hypocoil. These adaptations include enzymes that are resistant to inactivation that could result from the binding of metals, the ability of cell membranes to resist attacks from oxygen radicals, and the production of proteins that may have the ability to detoxify heavy metals. Through these adaptations, the fungus is able to facilitate the survival of Ericaceae plant species in harsh environments. The image on the right is from the Brazilian paper that shows an Iroquois mycorrhizal interaction. You can see the dense hypocoil cells of the Rhizophis ericae, where the asterisks are located, and it is forming a mycorrhizal relationship with Vicinium corymbosum root cells. Okay, so let's look at the exchange mechanism in Iroquois mycorrhiza. So the hypocoil is located at the site of nutrient exchange between the fungal and plant species. Fungal species extract key nutrients like nitrogen from the soil and exchange it for carbohydrates with the plant, which is produced via the process of photosynthesis. Furthermore, Iroquois fungi are known to excrete key enzymes to break down complex molecules in the surrounding soil to access organic forms of nutrients locked up in organic material. Upon breaking down this material, the exchange and transportation of key nutrients, amino acids, and other molecules are most likely transported and exchanged using proton co-transport, where an HATPase pump pushes out protons into the extracellular area, generating a driving force for the co-transportation of ions to occur. So to gain certain benefits that are essential for survival of both organisms, each organism must pay a price as well. The plant species benefits by directly receiving access to key nutrients from the surrounding nutrient depleted and acidic soil solution. And in return, the fungus benefits from this interaction by obtaining photosynthesis derived organic carbon from the host plant in the form of sugars. The plant must give up some of its photosynthetic products to survive in a nutrient limiting and toxic environment. And in return, the fungus must spend energy to transfer nutrients from the soil to the plant cell and give up some of its sabotropic abilities to form this mutualistic relationship with the plant. So on to our fun facts section. Let's talk about some unique features of Iroquois mycorrhizas. So our first fun fact um, really pertains to the idea that there's not always a right or wrong in science. We have a gray area. And this is exciting, especially for undergraduate science students. Some studies have shown that fungal communities colonizing Iroquois roots can lack specificity for different species of Iroquois plants suggesting that at least some of these fungi have a broad host range. A few lineage, lineages within the Ericaceae do not form Iroquois mycorrhiza and instead form other types of mycorrhizas. So maybe this interaction is not limited to just Ericaceae plant species. Furthermore, the geographic distribution of many fungi is uncertain, primarily because the identification of the fungal partners has not always been easy, especially prior to the application of DNA-based identification methods. Lastly, there is limited research on, on how Iroquois mycorrhizas um, function compared to our vascular and ectomycorrhizal associations. It is possible that important details of the Iroquois mycorrhizal relationship and our understanding of their distribution might change five to 10 years from now. One of the things that we found unique about Iroquois mycorrhizae is the environment in which you can find many Ericaceae plants surviving. 
Most plants cannot survive in acidic and infertile growing conditions, but this mycorrhizal association allows this family of plants to survive and thrive in this stressful environment. Additionally, we find these plants in many different habitats around the world, which means they're slowly starting to take over many environments. And we now see a worldwide distribution of these plants. Lastly, the economic importance of Ericaceae plant family is one of the key characteristics that gets most people excited about learning about these plants and the mycorrhizal associations it makes with many fungal species. Some of the important members of this plant family are common foods that are cultivated around the world, such as cranberry, blueberry, huckleberry, and many more. The farming of these fruits has very big economic significance in many countries around the world, including Canada, which is the number one wild blueberry exporter in the world. Certain flowering plants belonging to the Ericaceae family are also key in the production of honey as bees typically use their flowers as a source of nectar. Overall, I think that the presence of Ericoid mycorrhiza is very important for people that love blueberry pie and honey nut Cheerios. Thank you for watching our presentation. And please be sure to check out our high level infographic on D2L.